welcome back. I'm Shane Long. This is Here Am I. Glad you're tuning in. If this is your first time, go back and catch us from the front. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, share, hit the bell, get, get notified uh, when we got new videos coming out. I'm excited about this one. This is some good teaching out of God's Word. Some good teaching we need every day. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Chapter 23, verse 1 says, When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. It's saying, well, go me go one more. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon thy witches not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Saying riches, <laughs> riches will certainly make themselves wings. They'll fly away as an eagle towards heaven. It says, we have all heard of people who have won millions of dollars and then lost it all. Even the average person can spend an inheritance or a paycheck with lightning speed and have little to show for it. Don't spend your time chasing fleeting earthly treasures. Instead, store up your treasures in heaven, for such treasures will never be lost. And it reminds me over in Luke. 1233 where the Lord tells us sell that ye have and give alms provide yourselves bags which wax not old a treasure in the heavens that faileth not where no thief approacheth neither moth corrupteth for where your treasure is there will your heart be also amen that's a good one verse 6 Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten shall thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Remove not the old landmark, and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. For their Redeemer is mighty, he shall plead their cause with thee. Saying there in verse 10 and 11, the term Redeemer referred to someone who bought back a family member who had fallen into slavery or who accepted the obligation to marry a widow of a family member. God also called a redeemer. You can see that in Exodus 6, 6 and Job 19, 25, verse 12. Apply thine heart unto instruction and thine ears to the words of knowledge. That's a good one there. I'm saying the people most likely to gain knowledge are those who are willing to listen. It is a sign of strength, not weakness, to pay attention to what others have to say. People who are eager to listen continue to develop and grow throughout their lives. If we refuse to become set in our ways, we can always expand the limits of our knowledge. Verse 13, withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. That says the stern tone of correction in this verse is offset by the affection of of expressed in verse 15. However, many parents are reluctant to discipline their children. Some fear they will forfeit their relationship, that their children will resent them, or that they will stifle their children's development. However, correction won't kill them, and it may prevent them from foolish moves that would. Verse 14, Thou shalt beat him with a rod, and shalt deliver his soul from hell. My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right th- things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. That's saying how easy it is to envy those who get ahead, unhampered by Christian responsibilities or God's laws. 
For a time, they do seem to get ahead without paying any attention to God's desires. But to those who follow him, God promises a hope and a wonderful future, if, even if we don't realize it in this life. Verse 19, Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thine heart in the way. Be not among wine bibbers, among righteous eaters of flesh. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Hearken unto thy father that begot thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth, and sell it not, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice, and he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe thy ways. For a whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lieth in wait as for prey, and increaseth the transgressors among men. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine, they that go and seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself all right. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea or as he that lieth upon the top of the mast. They have stricken me, shalt they say, and it was not, and I was not sick. They have beaten me and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. It's saying there in verse 29 and 35, Israel was a wine-producing country in the Old Testament. Wine pressers bursting with new wine were considered a sign of blessing. Wisdom is even said to have set her table with wine, but the Old Testament writers were alert to the dangers of wine. It dulls the senses. It limits clear judgment. It lowers the capacity for control. It destroys one's efficiency to make an end in itself a means of self-indulgence or as an escape from life is to misuse it and invite the consequences of the drunkard. The soothing comfort of alcohol is only temporary. Real relief comes from dealing with the cause of the anguish and sorrow and turning to God for peace. Don't lose yourself in alcohol. Find yourself in God. They hit the nail on the head right then. That is good. Really good. I hope you all enjoyed it. Tomorrow we'll be in verse 24, and we've got our church camp out coming up, so we'll try to try to get some footage from that and see if we can't get it turned into a video, but I just want to thank y'all for tuning in, and, and please share, like, subscribe, um, help us out, but we'll move this thing along. We ain't got much more in Proverbs. Then we'll move on to something else. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. I hope y'all have a blessed week. And remember, give it to God. Don't try to cover it up with something that's temporary. It's just temporary. Let's go with the eternal. The everlasting. He's already paid the price for us. All we got to do is accept it. That's all we got to do. And follow the instructions. This is our instruction book. People want to run around. Why is everything going wrong in my life? Live in the Word. It's amazing how He just smooths it out. You'll have that peace in your heart. Even if you go through a little rough spell. He ain't saying it's going to be just easy. We'll read my Word, live live right. I'm going to make your life easy. You're just going to glide right on through to the next. You know, it's going to be tough. But you have that peace. Just It just rolls off of you. Like you covered in oil, and that water just beads off your back. And that's how it feels.
I love y'all. Stay tuned for more. And until next time.